my sisters and brothers and my dear confreres on the sixth sunday of easter i'm very happy to come once again back to you to reflect with you on the readings of the sunday liturgy the lord calls each one of us and tells us obey my commandments by loving me if you love me you will obey my commandments time old factor is that people always say love is the most misused word in the world i do disagree with the statement but at the same time love had been defined very subjectively in the context of the secular world if you ask anyone the fundamental question why do you love someone do you have an answer for that and most of the time even if you have an answer the answer would be i love you because i have some use of you precisely this is the love that is rejected by the gospel the value of the love that is proposed by jesus goes beyond the mere subjective experiences into an altruistic commitment for the well-being of the other st francis de sales the patron saint of the missionaries of st francis de sales says beautifully about love he defines love in his world famous spiritual classic treatise on the love of god in its book number 5 and chapter 1 he says love is the first feeling of satisfaction at the awareness of good there are some important words used here love is the first feeling of satisfaction at the awareness of good there should be feeling for something there should be a satisfaction emerging out of that feeling and this satisfaction is not merely uh, an outwardly satisfaction but is a satisfaction that is derived out of the awareness the knowledge of the good that i am experiencing in my life the fundamental question in the theological language in the spiritual life in christian values is what is this good the young man who came to jesus told him good master what must i do to inherit eternal life and jesus says who is good god alone is good when you say love is the first feeling of satisfaction at the awareness of good you would notice one thing here my prime goal in relationship in commitment in loving is my god can we begin our relationships our commitment in loving from the point of view of god himself jesus says if you love me you will keep my commandments one of the greatest ingredients of loving is to obey to listen attentively to the one whom i am loving and follow his path tread his ways and live his lifestyle into my own life love is an all integrating aspect of a person's life it cannot be merely an emotional exchange of my loving relationship it cannot be merely a love that is based on the material well being as long as you have power you have money you have the authority i love you when you are out of it i don't care about it i love someone who has it love is all inclusive whether you are poor whether you are beautiful whether you are great whether you are small i love you because you are from god love is the first feeling of satisfaction at the awareness of good I see this loving in the person of Jesus. When he says that if you love me 
you will keep my commandments he expressed that in his personal relationship with his father i am here because i am doing the will of my father and my loving my father is fulfilled through the commandments that he has given me to obey to listen attentively i love him and i do his will my brothers and sisters jesus engaged himself in a loving that is all integrating all inclusive if you look into the public ministry of jesus you would notice a very interesting thing about his life jesus during the three years of his public ministry he walked very constantly with three kinds of people or rather three kinds of people accompanied jesus more often than any other groups of people who were they first of all pleasure seeking women the title itself would be a bit embarrassing if you take take the gospel of luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 3 you would notice there jesus had a group of women disciples and in what kind of a society was that in a society which was male dominated a society where women had no right at all they were supposed to be sitting at home and not going out in such a situation jesus gathered around him a group of people who were women and what were these women who were they some of them were possessed by devils some of them were affected by sicknesses some of them were prostitutes all of them heard about jesus came to him experienced his love and were healed and were converted into that all embracing love of jesus because of this negativity that were surrounding them they were called pleasure seeking people but they became the people who accompanied jesus very constantly even unnoticed by the public the second kind of people or the category of people who followed jesus constantly was power seeking zealots you know even in the band of the apostles there was a zealot simon the zealot who was a zealot a zealot was a man full of zeal zeal for what zeal for his nation he was a patriot anyone who is not a patriot anyone who is against his national feelings he would kill them he would destroy them and that's exactly what a zealot would do a fanatic but in the company of jesus he was a meek lamb again a third category of people with whom jesus walked all alone is money seeking tax collectors Matthew the tax collector one of the disciples of Jesus Jesus went with these three varieties of people without any discrimination but one of the things that you would notice is this in spite of the fact that Jesus went around with power seeking zealots money seeking tax collectors pleasure seeking women you would never find anywhere in the gospel that Jesus is accused by anybody regarding pleasure power or money pleasure stands against chasteness or chastity power stands against obedience and money stands against poverty Jesus in spite of the fact that he went around with these people he was never affected by their inclinations he redeemed them and brought them to a new concept of love the love of god the spirituality that was followed by jesus was a lot of spirituality growing in the dirt but never affected by the dirt in the surroundings a pure love that redeemed the humanity that made the people around him to love him so earnestly and to obey his commandments and that's exactly what we would read in the first reading today philip one of the deacons went from jerusalem to samaria in order to preach the gospel of the lord he converted the gentiles he healed them from their sicknesses he 
delivered them and liberated them from their clutches of inclinations and subjective interests demons were chased away when the word of god was spoken love going beyond the boundaries we see in the second reading from the letter of saint peter peter telling it is better to suffer for that which is righteous and not for that which is bad love is all embracing and the lord concludes his statement with this he says if you love me i will live inside of you the consequence of love is life my brothers and sisters we are called to give life by loving look around the world today when i see the migrant workers suffering and dying on the road that is my love when i see the people who are from our country who are stranded abroad are struggling to come back and see their beloved ones and to live with them that is our love we who are quarantined without within the luxury rooms of our own compartments must realize this love should go beyond my own self it should not be by securing my securities properly and then speaking and preaching about love instead shutting away my own possibilities giving those possibilities for the uplift of those suffering humanity jesus is our role model a person who tells me and you love and obey my commandments you would understand the meaning of life i wish each of us that we remain in the love of the lord that we become life bearers for the humanity around us may the lord who invites us through his personal relationship to love him give inside interiorly to each one of us a love that is life giving for the humanity around us i wish each of you a blessed sunday the sixth sunday of easter may the spirit of god work in us amen